Hello and welcome. In this educational aid, we're going to talk about gravity and how it enables orbits and the relationship between distance and the force of gravity. When you toss a ball into the air, what happens? You prove the adage, what goes up must come down. The reason the ball comes back down is because of gravity. But what is gravity? Gravity is a force. When you push or pull something, you impart a force onto it. But gravity is somewhat different because gravity is not physically touching the thing it is affecting. Gravity is a field force rather than a contact force. Gravity is defined as the force of traction measured between two objects. The greater the masses, the greater the gravitational force pulling those masses together. The greater the distance between two objects, the less the force of attraction. All objects with mass have this force of attraction between them. We will discuss the relationship this force of attraction has with distance a little later, but for now, let's dig a little deeper on gravity and how it enables orbits. Imagine standing in a field where there are no obstacles in any direction. As you throw a ball as hard as you can with a velocity that is perfectly horizontal to the Earth, the ball will travel a good distance before gravity brings the ball back to the ground. Now, imagine standing on top of a mountain and you throw a ball as hard as you can with a velocity that is perfectly horizontal to the Earth. This time, the ball will travel a ways further, but still will fall back to the Earth because of gravity. The Earth's gravity has a pulling effect on the ball. Using kinematics, we can derive that in one second, an object will fall a distance of approximately five meters. This five meters is significant. Looking at the Earth, which is a giant sphere and curves somewhat at a constant rate, for approximately every eight kilometers you travel in a straight line, the Earth curves beneath you approximately five meters. To better illustrate this, imagine a beam that is perfectly straight, eight kilometers long, and inflexible. With this beam firmly attached to the Earth, it would extend out to the horizon. If you had walked to the end of this beam, the Earth would be five meters below you. Now, let's go back to the top of the mountain. If we can assume no atmosphere drag, the Earth is not rotating, and a few other simplifying assumptions, and throw the ball at eight kilometers a second, what would happen? The ball would continue to fall just in the previous examples, but because of the velocity you threw the ball, eight kilometers a second, the ball will continue to fall around the Earth, but never hit the ground. And about 90 minutes after you threw the ball, you can turn around and catch the ball. This is what happens with satellites in orbit. They are falling around the Earth. That's right, falling. Satellites are not flying in space. They are falling. When in space, you're not in zero gravity. That's a misnomer. Because without gravity, we cannot have orbits. A satellite must have a significant horizontal velocity, large enough that it keeps missing the Earth as it falls due to the force of gravity. Approximately eight kilometers a second is the minimum velocity required to stay in orbit around the Earth at sea level. Though, of course, orbiting at sea level is not very likely. Now that we understand how gravity enables orbits, we can discuss the relationship between distance and gravity. Again, we need to come back to Newton, specifically his universal law of gravity. This law states the magnitude of the force of gravity between two bodies is directly proportional to the product of their two masses and inversely proportional to the square of their distance between. I know we need to make this a little less confusing. We will do this in a couple steps. Let's look at the force of gravity between the Earth and a satellite. The force of gravity is equal to the gravitational constant times the mass of the Earth times the mass of the satellite, all divided by the distance between the center of the Earth and the center of the satellite. Now we can make it simple because right now we only want to understand the relationship between distance and gravity. Because G represents the universal gravitational constant and does not change, the mass of the Earth does not change, and the mass of the satellite is so small when compared to the mass of the Earth, they each can be ignored. This relationship can be expressed as the force of gravity is proportional to one over the radius squared. You can now see as the distance between the Earth and satellite increases, the force of gravity 
decreases. Specifically, as the radius or distance doubles, the force of gravity decreases by a factor of four. And as the distance triples, the force of gravity decreases by a factor of nine, and so on. So, to understand this relationship, Newton's universal law of gravitation can be restated as the magnitude of the force of gravity between two bodies is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the bodies and proportional to the product of two masses. More mass, more gravity. More distance, less gravity. We now understand how gravity is an enabler of orbits and the force of gravity between two objects decreases as the distance between them increases. Given a satellite at an altitude of 350 kilometers above the Earth, it's experienced a force of gravity 90% of the force of gravity when it was on the surface of the Earth. This is because the distance between the Earth and the satellite has increased. The greater the distance, less the gravity. Now, let's compare the force of gravity of a human on Earth, the Moon, and Mars. A human on Earth experienced 1 g of gravitational force. When you put the person on the Moon, the force of gravity is about 1 6 of that of the Earth. And when on the surface of Mars, the force of gravity is one-third of that of the Earth. The smaller the masses of the objects, the smaller the force of gravity between the objects. The main reason for this is the mass of the Moon and Mars is roughly one-sixth and one-third, respectively, of that of the Earth. I am Jeremy Brown with the National Security Space Institute, and I hope you enjoyed this educational aid.